Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. You'll notice I'm wearing a beaming smile. I think everyone that's wearing this badge on their chest right now is wearing a beaming smile because Liverpool are about to complete the signing, the world record signing for a goalkeeper. It's Alisson from Roma. Today has been a day when things have really progressed. Yesterday was obviously a breakthrough when we actually made the bid and it seems as though overnight things have really uh, got down to business between the two clubs and a deal, uh, uh, well a bid has been accepted of 66.9 million pounds or 75 million euros. The player has agreed to come, he's on his way to Merseyside, he's going to become our new number one Liverpool are making statements, Liverpool are making waves and Liverpool are making ground on Manchester City and are going to be title contenders this season. I think we can all rest assured on that fact and I've got so much to talk about today. It, again, it was supposed to be just a Blackburn versus Liverpool preview, looking at how I might line up against Blackburn and this video is still going to be titled Blackburn versus Liverpool preview because I preview every game and I'm going to touch on it. Um, we've also got stuff about Nabil Fakir, we've got stuff about Daniel Sturridge and unfortunately We've got stuff about Alex Oxlade Chamberlain, but let's start with Alisson. Uh, I'm reading from The Guardian right now, Fabrizio Romano. Um, the Guardian are even going as far as saying, the headline says, Liverpool sign Roma goalkeeper Alisson for world record £66.9 million fee. They think it's done. Um, so this morning it looked like a, a, a bid had been accepted, but... Um, there was still time for another club to come in and match that bid and talk to the player. So Liverpool had been granted permission. Um, I thought, I kind of expected the Chelsea bid, but then I think if Liverpool um, are kind of indicating to the media that they're quietly confident or they're cautiously confident, as it was phrased, I think, by Melissa Reddy last night, then that means they're very confident um, in, in, in real terms. If they're happy to release that sort of information to the local journalists even, if it was indeed them that did it, then there must be a huge air of confidence that they're going to get this done. So that was always in my mind, but I was always fearful that Chelsea are quite unpredictable. And in the last decade or so, they have had the better of us uh, when it comes to getting the players they want. Uh, but not now, honestly, the tides are turning. This is the most exciting time to be a Liverpool fan since, I mean, for me, ever, ever. If, if you're not excited about what's happening at this club right now, then you do not belong in this sport because the whole way Liverpool do business has completely changed. I know it's the Coutinho money and I know uh, this is supposed to happen last season and the net spend hasn't been right the last few seasons. I've been a bigger complainer about that as you have. But we're finally now doing something about it and we're identifying the problem positions. Um, <laughs> We've gone from Karius being number one to Ward being number one to Alisson, uh, one of the most sought-after goalkeepers in the world. The Brazilian's number one, uh, the best goalkeeper in Serie A last season, according to the stats. What more can you say? What more can you say? 25 years old, he's got another decade ahead of him where he can keep goal at Anfield. Let's read the rest of this piece. Um, the goalkeeper is flying to England on Wednesday night and expected to have a medical on Saturday. So he's coming tonight. We've seen the pictures online uh, of him at the airport in Rome, uh, an airport that we graced ourselves a couple of months ago uh, as we defeated Alisson's Roma uh, en route to Kiev. In the Champions League, uh, the Premier League club made an initial 70 million euro bid for a Brazilian on Tuesday, which was rejected, but the clubs have now reached a deal. Liverpool and Roma have agreed the final details of the transfer on Wednesday with the fee, which includes 5 million euros in add-ons to be paid over two years. Uh, Chelsea were ready to move, uh, but they hadn't made an offer by Wednesday lunchtime. Uh, Alisson spoke to Klopp on Tuesday and had his heart set on a move. What is Klopp saying to these players? He's convinced... Um, Alisson, Van Dijk, Fabinho and Keita, all of which could have quite easily moved to a club that maybe offered more money, maybe not, but maybe offered more money, certainly offered more guarantee of trophies perhaps, Liverpool haven't won anything for a long time, as we're always reminded by opposition fans, but something's happening here, something is happening, um, first and foremost Alisson will be announced over the weekend I'm sure. First game, maybe Dublin. Um, maybe I'll have, I'll have a look at flights again. Uh, see if I can maybe pull some money together for that. But yes, wow, there we go. What more can you say about Alisson? Leave a comment with your thoughts. Um, now, we've been here with Fakir. We've been here with Fakir earlier on in the summer. But we can't help but think this is surely done and dusted, can we? I'm sure it will be announced very soon. Speaking of Fakir, um, that is the next thing on the agenda. Um, 
Dean Jones from Bleacher Report says that he's told Fakir now progressing well again. Uh, this could be a defining week for Liverpool. So, I mean, take what you want from that. Dean Jones is no mug. He's a Bleacher Report journalist or a football insider, as he calls himself on his social media profile. Um, James Pearce said earlier on today on Facebook Live that he'd be surprised if the Fakir deal was resurrected unless there was a radical restructuring of the terms. But this is a man, this, this is a, a collective group of uh, Liverpool journalists that didn't know much about the Allison stuff until late on. Not their fault, they're just not being told. Um, lessons learned from last year in Van Dijk. Fakir is very much still on the radar, so there's that to look forward to as well. And then once those two are in, I think that is it. Liverpool's squad will be set, and it will be a squad without Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain because the England international is out for the season. Now this is horrible news, not just from a squad point of view, um, but from a personal point of view, I think we've all got a bit of an affinity to Oxley Chamberlain. He's just such a nice guy. As basic as that sounds, he is such a nice guy. He is so he speaks so well about the club, and all the stories you hear from him are from players, whether it's youth players or from his senior teammates. He's a great guy to have around, and a model pro, and just exactly the sort of guy you want representing your club. And he was phenomenal last season. He really he got better and better. We all doubted him at first. He was shoved on the wing, made a few sub appearances, and he could just never get a game for the first few months. Um, but it all turned around, he showed patience, he showed determination, and he massively improved. I just hope this injury doesn't completely ruin his career. It's a year off, we've seen players go away for a year after an injury and not, be, not come back the same. But Nabu Fakir went away for, for a long time with, with injury and come back even better. So let's hope Ox uh, can do the same and let's hope they're on the same team when they do so. But it's honestly very sad. Um, Klopp said it feels like now is an appropriate time to tell people that for Ox this season will be about focusing on recovery and rehab. We have known this from pretty much the day he got the injury, but Ox didn't want to tell his teammates or anyone or anyone else because he didn't want to uh, interrupt the momentum we had going to that Champions League final. What a bloke. What a bloke. Wish him the best. Hope he comes back soon. And yeah, that's all there is to that. It's very, very frustrating, but he's, a, he's still our player and he's still very much a part of our future. Is Daniel Sturridge a part of our future? That's the last topic as far as transfers are concerned. He's declared his intention, according to the Echo, to force his way back into the Liverpool first team this season. Um, he said, I see myself staying at Liverpool, hopefully being part of the team week in, week out. Now, we've heard uh, suggestions that he might drop into a bit of a deeper role. Um, and maybe he's a number 10. You know, he's obviously lost that bursting pace, which saw him so, uh, become such a lethal striker before us in, uh, about five years ago. But... He's obviously still got a lot of quality and he seems to be in a positive mood. He seems to be fit. So, you know, with this Oxlade Chamberlain injury, there is a, maybe a space in that, in that attacking area for someone to be uh, used. And it could be it could be him. I mean, Origi seems to be linked with moves away. I think we might have given up on him. Um, don't know on Solanke. Downing's obviously leaving. Um, we've got rid of Wilson. Um, I imagine Ojo will probably go. It, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the year where someone of that cluster of players that have been on loan is going to break through. So Sturridge might be kept around, and who knows? I mean, why not? Um, if nobody wants to pay that big asking price and no one wants to pay those wages, maybe Klopp can find the role for him. So there you go. Daniel Sturridge very much wants to stay at Liverpool. Uh, let's see if that's the case. Now, that is all for transfers. Let's look ahead to Blackburn versus Liverpool. Um, this was going to be the main talking point of the video, um, but it's suddenly taking a back seat because of what's happened today. Anyway, it's the last domestic friendly. Um, the most recent one at Bury was a 0 draw, obviously a very disappointing one. Um, there was a lot of uncertainty around the goalkeeping situation. I mean, it feels so long ago. It felt like Ward was going to be number one. Um, we didn't know about um, Harry Wilson. I mean, yeah, so interesting. I think Danny Ward will start this game. Who knows who's going to be on number two this season? We still don't really know that. If Alisson comes in on Saturday, we've got four um, senior goalkeepers there, so we're obviously going to have to get rid of at least one. Um, you assume Mingley will go, and then you'd assume... I mean, who else would leave? Ward surely won't want another season just being sat around and you might struggle to find a buyer for Carrier, so maybe Ward will go, so this might be a good opportunity for him to get in the shop window, as the cliche goes. Uh, I'm not sure on Vinaldum's fitness, I'm not sure if he's going to be ready to return yet, but uh, obviously this is the last friendly also before we see the likes of Shakiri, Salah, Mane, Firmino join the squad. We've obviously got Van Dijk and Matip back, they played at the weekend. So I just want to see... 
uh, slightly improved fitness level, slightly improved fluidity in attacking areas. I'll be interested to see who Klopp puts together, whether we'll get any indications. I say this every preseason game, whether we'll get any indications of, of plans. We started to see it a bit last summer in the, um, in the Premier League Asia Trophy or whatever it was. We started to see a bit of what Klopp wanted to do, so uh, maybe now is the time to kind of turn on the accelerator. But to be honest, it's hard to talk about this game. Um, because it is essentially just the same as the three that have gone before it. Um, so let's hope we can win it. <laughs> let's hope we can maintain the unbeaten run. Let's hope we get out of it unscathed. And let's hope players continue to impress. Lallana's looked really sharp in pre-season. With Oxlow chamberlains injury, he'll know that he's got a huge chance to really secure a starting place uh, as, a, as the number 10 or 8, whatever you want to call it, in this team. Um, alongside you know Henderson and Cater or Fabinho and Cater or Henderson and Van Alden, or whatever, or Cater and Van Alden, whatever it is we do in midfield, I'm sure it's horses for courses. But Alana can really cement that attacking berth. So, yeah, another big chance for him to impress. And, yeah, I mean, as I said about Origi and Slanky, those guys have got to do something. Good chance again for Rafa Camacho to show what he's worth. Shea Yodra has been doing pretty well so far. Ryan Kent, another one I'm sure will go on loan, but will want to do well here. And, you know, obviously the senior players, Robertson. Klein, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Klein, uh, Van Dijk, Matip, uh, we'll just build the fitness up and, you know, be in tip-top shape for the tour, which, as I say, I am going to, I'm flying to New York a week today, um, so if you're from the area, drop me a comment, hit me up, um, I'm going to be in Carragher's Bar uh, on Wednesday afternoon, so hopefully meet some of you there. Um, that's all for now. What a day. What a time to be a Liverpool fan. Leave a comment with your thoughts on today's developments, your thoughts on Alisson. Are you happy with that signing or do you think we could have maybe spent that money better elsewhere? I don't think many of you are going to say that, but there will be one or two because there always is. And I look forward to replying to every single one of your comments. So give me your thoughts on Alisson, Fekir, Sturridge, because, you know, it's still a topic um, worth discussing around whether he can uh, force his way back into the, the squad. And the Blackburn game, your score prediction, uh, if you care at all about that. Um, I'll be back here tomorrow after that game. I'm not going, so I'll be sat here very shortly after the game doing my review of that. So I'll see you then. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and Facebook. It's Ben Might Say on all of those platforms. I've probably been talking really fast in this video because it's been such an exciting day. And I'll see you next time.